I will start it anyway, just in case you want to keep on track. Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming over. Um, Today we are going to talk about MapLoris traffic sign extraction capabilities and also we will share our analysis uh, how MapLoris can help improving OSM in terms of traffic sign coverage. And I'm Said Trixar, I'm project manager at Meta, I'm long time OSM contributor as well and today I'm joined with Yunzi uh, which we collaborated for this project together. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Yunzi. I'm a quality analyst from Meta, supporting the metrics, uh, quality, and project planning. Thanks, Yunzi. Um, yeah, this is pretty much our agenda for today. And before starting to the introduction, you may be wondering, like, what's the involvement of Meta to OpenStreetMap as well as Maps at all? So I just want to give a quick overview of Maps at Meta. So Meta uses open data to build maps and works with communities and building tools to improving OpenStreetMap and improving maps for everyone. So we are maintaining two main products, which are MapLoy and Rapid. So MapLoy is a street level imagery platform, automates and scales um, map data generation, and Rapid is a tool for improving uh, OSM quicker and then smarter, which extract road networks and buildings uh, from the satellite imagery. And we are also supporting Overture Maps. Meta is a funding organization of Overture Maps, which is the curated version of uh, OpenStreetMap, where there are like uh, other data sources on the OpenStreetMap data. So Meta loves OpenStreetMap. So we have MapLury, which extracts and then those external map features are available uh, to OSM. We have different uh, editors, I editors, Rapid, and JSM. And Rapid also is a tool where you can also verify um, ML detected, uh, computer vision detected roads, and then validate if they are really roads. So basically, those which are allowing uh, improving OSM, then eventually this data goes to Omniture as well. Yes, yeah, still we are getting there. Why Meta use maps? So Meta has a product which has 42 services where our end users can interact with the maps. And those are some exa examples of where Meta use maps on the products. And we have uh, Facebook pages where you can see a uh, map here, and then if you click this map, you will see a uh, Meta's base map. As well as if you go to Instagram Discovery, you will see story maps uh, where you can share the um, shared stories over the map. Then also we have Marketplace as a surface where you can create a buffer around the, your area of interest you want to purchase stuff. Cool, today we are going to talk about MapLoris specifically and MapLoris traffic sign extraction capabilities and then how we can improve OSM data with MapLoris traffic sign extraction. Uh, MapLoris is a street level imagery platform, scales and auto automates mapping. I will get, go into more details how it works. At the moment, we have two billion, around two billion images. Earlier this week, we had a presentation from Ed, had two billion images. So we are about to hit two billion milestone, which is incredible. Those images were fully cross sourced and came from our community as well as our clients. I'm just curious, like, do we have anyone at least contribute one sequence or one image to MapLoy? Awesome. Do we have anyone who contribute at least 2,000 images? Get a t-shirt? I think you were the first. More than 2,000? All right, this is a little gift from us. Thank you. 5,000? More than 5,000? I mean, I don't need proof. You also 5,000? I see you. Okay, I trust you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. And thanks for too. 
So basically, all those images came from the community as well as uh, our partners, which are organizations, governmental organizations. Thanks for contributing. And eventually, this data helps also improving OSM. All right, let's get into how Mapboard automates and scales mapping. Earlier, in the map data collection, and still, we are using hotel stations, GPS, and then LiDAR for collecting data. But you don't really necessarily need high, accurate data for each use cases. So Mapboard does map data generation based on your purpose um, with the computer vision and ML. So, in this talk, we are going to talk about what is the accuracy of that mapping generated map data, and then how this can be suitable for improving OSM. So we have contributor networks which uploads imagery, imagery to Mapillary. Then when the images hit our uh, database, we are running like object detection and then 3D reconstruction, and then. We are basically identifying each object location on the 3D uh, reconstruction model. I have a quick animation later on. Cool. How to map blurry. So basically you can use any camera to contribute map blurry. You can use your smartphone, for, we have app for iOS and Android. And you can use external cameras like this, 360 camera, which is pretty straightforward. And then we have a good workflow for capturing and uploading it. Then also we have a dash cam where you can put this in front of your car and then you can capture uh, while you're traveling. So if you have a car and then you're constantly driving, please let me know. We can chat more about dash cams. And then you can also use professional rig for contributing map theory. So we have uh, partners and NGS companies who are using professional rigs like Ladybug, Trimble, etc. and they're uploading to map theory. Cool. And then there is also a relation between resolution, resolution of imagery, the high quality of like telemetry, and then map data extraction. We are going to address later as well. So when the imagery um, came up our platform, there are like, different ways to upload imagery to Mapillary. So the first icon represents like Mapillary's desktop uploader, which is quite an easy tool that you can drag and drop all the images or videos. So recently. We start to support uh, CAM format uploading, which is the most compatible format for Street View, introduced by Google. And then we have Mapillary Tools, which is a Python library, which uh, basically parse um, images from the videos, or you can do like some custom uh, workflow, or you can even like automa automatize your Raspberry Pi uh, and upload your images directly. Then the simplest way, if you capture with Mapillary app, you can just, with a single tab, you can upload the imagery. Then Mapillary does the magic, and then map data will be available to you. Cool. And then I just mentioned that we are reconstructing the uh, 3D model from the images. So in this example, you are seeing like very dense capture, street level imagery in grass. And this model was supported also with drone imagery with a low a height. And then all reconstructed uh, images are helping to build this uh, redefined model. So this is purely generated from street level imagery. And then objects were extracted and then uh, positioned in the 3D model. And then, yeah, this data is available for everyone who is either contributing or not contributing, and then also available on uh, OSM surfaces. And which surfaces we will see very soon. All right, we extract like 42 street assets uh, globally, and then more than 1,500 traffic sign uh, classes. And some of the example uh, map features, fire hydrants, street lights, utility poles, traffic lights, crosswalks, and those are like some of the street uh, furniture examples. Apart from that, we extract uh, traffic signs as well. Um, and today we are going to talk about its quality. Cool. 
And then you see the OSM editors uh, when memory process those images and then extract map data. If you go to basically like macro layer, you can enable like macro imagery. Uh, you, you have also option to filter images. Either you want to filter like 360 or flat images, then you can also filter any kind of map features uh, or traffic signs. So we have also JoySM plugin where you can see uh, map generated map features. Pretty straightforward to extract this data uh, from the map web app. So we have a web interface. So this is the power sheet Pristina. And if you select like, all traffic signs and all points, and then map loads all, all of those signs, and then with Literally, with two clicks, you can extract all map data and then you can use for any purposes for analysis or improve OSM. You can map like traffic signs, crosswalks, etc. All right. So, that was Mapplery overview and how you can capture map for capture to Mapplery and upload the Mapplery and how you can really utilize a map data from the Mapplery. All right, um, so we are going to have a review of traffic sign and the scope of stop sign uh, in this uh, presentation. You may be wondering, like, why to map traffic signs? That might be not your favorite thing, but uh, every day we are using uh, navigation apps which are supporting our navigation experiences. Traffic signs are fundamental of having a smoother navigation and having a better um, est estimated time of arrival uh, for your journey. Especially traffic signs are quite important for like pedestrian navigation and pedestrian safety. Uh, we are, where we are trying to do experiments to improve like uh, pedestrian um, routing and then uh, navigation. Also in this work, we did a benchmarking of map generated map data against ground truth data. We literally <coughs> survey ground truth data and compare its accuracy against ground truth data. And then we are going to also talk about what's our recall and precision rate. Yeah, we went further and then check. Um, so what is in the real world with the ground uh, survey and what is on OSM? And kind of run analysis, Yunzi is going to talk about further how much data is missing on OSM versus um, real world. All right, let's move into our methodology. Simply we call it ground truth data with surveying humans, and then we use GoPromax uh, for uh, street level imagery collection. Uh, in San Francisco area of interest, uh, you will see map in the future next slides. And then this camera is quite affordable, like, I don't know, 350 euro, uh, but can do really good stuff, uh, even though it has very low cost uh, GPS. And you can even like do further improvement with using some of the external um, GNSS equipment. Then we upload those imagery to Mapillary, and Mapillary uh, process data, blur faces, license plates, and then extract map data. And then, um, yeah. And then we pair ground truth data with Mapillary extracted features because we want to kind of create an association between survey ground truth data and then Mapillary. So if there is a ground truth object here and then Mapillary thinks that this object is elsewhere, in order to uh, measure the offset between what is in the real world and what, is, what does Mapillary generate, we need to kind of create an association between ground truth data and then Mapillary generated data. In the further stage, we run recall and precision analysis, position accuracy, and then uh, OSM power analysis, where you're going to talk about against OSM data, and then ingest it to OSM uh, using um, MapRulet. All right, I will hand over to Yunzi for talking about QA implementation and results. Thank you. Um, okay, so to implement the methodology that Saeed just mentioned, uh, we designed a workflow starting from the field work 
uh, the fewer including like the ground truth data collections using the wild shows here, and also the street level imagery collections. And then we process the street level imagery using the mapillary computer vision pipelines and generate the map data, uh, for example, traffic signs. And we then, after we collect the ground truth data and the mapillary generated data, we start doing the pairings. Um, well, we first ingest this data into the QA tooling that we also created uh, in-house at Meta, and then do the pairing in the QA toolings. Uh, the pairings would give us the key results for us to measure the accuracies of the mapillary genetic data. Um, after that, we do completions among the ground truth data, the mapillary genetic data, and OSM data. Um, and then we push the completed data to OSM. So that's the implementation workload. Um, we chose three areas of interest uh, located in US for this experiment. Uh, Bellevue in Washington State, uh, Redmond also in Washington State, and San Francisco in California. Uh, so the image on the right side here, it shows, it shows the red one shows how the map pollution data look like, and the blue one shows where we collect the ground truth data. Uh, this shows the Bellevue, and then here is the Redmond area of interest, and this is the San Francisco area of interest. So we have done a lot of work for the data collections. Um, the table on the left side shows the, the, our accuracy, our key results that measuring the quality of the mapillary generated data. Um, as you can see, the recall of the data in all three uh, areas of interest are relatively high. They are all above 90%. Um, and the positional accuracy are all within three meters, which align with what we expect. However, the position is relatively low. Uh, they're all below 90%. So we did a further investigation about what causes these relatively lower positions. And we find out um, the likely cause is the false detections on the temporary traffic signs because all this area, every interest we chose, there's a fair amount of construction happening at the moment. So there's temporary stop signs uh, in a lot of intersections that causing this, causing the lower positions. The other thing is the missing ground truth data as well. Um, we may not collect ground truth data very thoroughly during the exper experimentation, so that's the other cause. Um, so, uh, if you remember the, the workflow, the next step like after we get the result measurements, we complete the data and also push to OSM. But before we push the data to OSM, we always do like OSM curve which check to make sure that uh, to make sure how many data to find out how many data is are missing on OSM and how how we can improve like open data. So the result turns out. Um, the OSM coverage is pretty low in all areas of interest against either the ground truth data and the mapillary generated data. So that also proves that the mapillary generated data um, it would be will help to improve OSM coverage significantly. Um, so when we are working on data from multiple resources, conflations are always one important step. Uh, we have done completions for our ML road, which is a road data layer that you see in Rapid. Uh, we also have done completions in, in buildings, uh, also the data layer that you could see in Rapid. We have done the footway completions, which we also present a, a talk la in last possible years about our completion technology on footways. But we never done point completions. Uh, and most of the map generated data, there are points, like traffic signs, um, uh, traffic lights, uh, benches, um, a lot of data that Saeed just showed is their point data. So uh, that's why there are a couple more steps we need to do to finish the completions. The first one is finding the completion threshold, the distance threshold. So what we do is we evaluate every single match pair uh, that we already obtained uh, from the query process in between the ground truth data and, uh, uh, and the the mapillary generated data. Uh, here the pink one is, uh, oh sorry, the OSM data and the ground truth data. The pink one here is the OSM data and the orange one here is the ground truth data that we have. 
So if we evaluate the distance, uh, which is the, the solid line that uh, if you can see in the image, it may not be very clear. Um, so we, and we extract the statistics based on all this distance, and we find out there's three candidates for so distance that we can use. Uh, one is eight meters, and the other one is nine meters, and 11 meters. That means any, any data that, uh, we should conflate the data that uh, apart from each other's uh, over this threshold distance. So we got three candidate distance um, among this chosen area of interest as our candidate. So the next step is taking a look that, at the completion results and building the completion pipeline. So we developed the specific completion pipelines for the point completions, and we use these three candidates to uh, extract the conflation result, which is shown in green dots on this three image. Uh, each image is a conflation result from uh, each candidate distance. Um, so once we got this candidate distance, um, as you can see, the the larger distance um, of the the larger of the candidate distance, the the less of the conflated results, because we conflate away more data when it when the threshold distance goes larger. So, but we still have three candidate distance here. And we want to know, we can only use one as our final result. And we want to know which one is the best, uh, has the best accuracy. So we evaluate all the completion results from all these three candidate distance and find out that um, the A meters actually has the highest ac accuracy of completions based on our evaluations. So, um, at the end, we use the completed result from the A meters distance and then add it to OSMs. Um, by far, we added over like 200, added data to over 200 intersections in all these three areas of interest on OSM. So, concluding this experiment, um, it's, it can it prove that mapillary can generate map objects with more than 95 recall on average. Uh, among all three area of interest, and the mapillary generated data can also be within 2.4 meters of average horizontal position accuracy, specifically for stop signs. In fact, we applied a similar experiments on USI in ped pedestrian crossing, and combining all data, the average dis uh, horizontal position accuracy is even uh, better. It's 2.16 meters, um, and our analysis on OSM also proved that um, not like there's a significant amount of distance uh, of data is missing on OSM uh, for stop sign in these experiments. Um, not just the three area of interest, but also in general, stop signs are not very well mapped, especially in US. So, which means the street level imagery and mapillary generated data can play a very important role to help complete the missing traffic signs infrastructures on OpenStreetMap. So that leads to our future words. Um, we mentioned that we, we have the within like less than three meters but, uh, horizontal positional accuracies, uh, which align with what we expect. But we still want to improve that accuracies because three meters cut for certain point features that is still not ideal. So the, some future words, including improving these accuracies uh, for the macular journal data using the control point methods to realign the data. Um, and right now we're only working on very limited amounts of traffic signs and we want to expand our conflation work uh, and our experiments to wider mapillary journey objects. Uh, the conflation work we have done for this experiment also is local, it's not universal. So which means that we may also want to develop better conflation strategy between the mapillary uh, generated data and OSM data. Um, of course, that we welcome any support on having this open, uh, the mapillary data to any open source platform such as OSM. So we uh, we are planning to work with the Rapid team to build an easier workflow to ingest the mapillary generated data uh, by surfacing the this data to Rapid as a data layer. Thank you.